Well, hello everybody. Uh, yes, it has been a while. We do apologize that we could not finish out the Oklahoma football season um, last October. We definitely had a lot of things happen. Work really dominated everything, plus personal obligations. And I told myself if I could not uh, devote myself to being able to watch Oklahoma games in depth, which I could not do last season uh, during the latter half of the season, then I would not do the reports because it's not fair to you, the um, subscribers, the viewers who've watched me throughout the years, to give a half-assed show knowing full and well that uh, yours truly did not watch the game and I'm not going to do something like that. It wouldn't be a fair, it wouldn't be an honest, and it wouldn't be an in-depth Pacific critique of how Oklahoma played. So that's why we had to close it off. I'm sorry that we couldn't get that announcement on earlier. And sorry we got this announcement on late. So my apologies. Hope you can forgive me and hope you come back for football this upcoming season. We'll have something college football, maybe pro football wise coming up during the fall. But let's go ahead and talk about the NBA because I have a love for professional basketball. Playoff starting this weekend, April 18th and 19th, 18th on Saturday. Four first round matchups will start on Sunday. Four first round matchups will start after Wednesday night, after April 15th, just a day away. We will know who plays who in the NBA playoffs and who has home court and all the seedings. Two nights to go, though, tonight, Tuesday, and Wednesday to finish the regular season. In the Western Conference, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the Golden State Warriors for just a second. Number one seed. They've had the number one seed, it seems like, uh, since the opening week of the season. I know they necessarily haven't, but it just seems like it. Stephon Curry, the right now the MVP candidate, he's number one MVP candidate based upon his points per game, but also his shooting percentage um, from you know inside three-point range and, of course, three-point range as well. It's been deadly at the free throw line. He has been the ultimate point guard this season out in Oakland. And then Clay Thompson has been the scoring machine as well. Great job by first-year head coach Steve Kerr making the transition from television to um, the sideline head coaching the Warriors. Golden State will play either New Orleans or Oklahoma City this weekend in round one. The Pelicans will clinch the number eight spot if they can win at home against San Antonio on Wednesday. If they lose, that opens the door for the Thunder. Oklahoma City would then go to the playoffs with a New Orleans loss and an Oklahoma City win over Minnesota. Thunder lose, they're out no matter what. If New Orleans wins, they're in no matter what. So, that's how it looks right now. Thunder need to win and get some help from San Antonio to defeat New Orleans. Number four spot, we already know, belongs to Portland. The Trail Blazers won the Northwest Division, record of 51-30 and 30 presently. However, they cannot move up any higher or lower than four, and they won't have home court advantage for round one. That's because the number five seed presently, whoever it is, whether it's Houston, whether it's Memphis, it, even, it could even be San Antonio if things don't work out the Spurs way. It could be the Clippers. All four of those teams have better records than Portland, and that's what determines home court advantage in any matchup is record, okay? Not division accolades necessarily. So Portland will be the four seed, but will be going on the road for round number one. Dallas will be the number seven seed. We know that, but you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that Rajon Rondo, unless something miraculous happens, uh, will not be a Dallas Maverick this next year. That acquisition for him, you know, getting him in that trade, um, it has not worked out. It's not been a honeymoon at all between him and Rick Carlisle. It's, it's just, needless to say, it's been a disaster, but they still got to the playoffs, and they do have some experienced players on that squad with Nowitzki, of course, um, and also, too, uh, don't forget uh, Tosh and Chandler, you know, back in Dallas after being in New York for a while. So, we got that to talk about, and how about the seeds that have not been decided yet? But San Antonio will be number two if they can win at New Orleans, no matter what happens. If they lose, however, that opens the door for teams like the Clippers, um, who presently can't win that division in the Pacific because Golden State clinched it a while back. However, because the Clippers are 55 and 26, um, could end up, you know, it, they, they can't drop any lower than number five. We know that. They cannot drop any lower than number five. So they would actually be at home for the first two games, whoever they play. So that could very well happen, but the Clippers could actually move all the way up to number two if the Spurs lose to New Orleans and if the Rockets lose to the Jazz on Wednesday, and the Clippers can close out their season with a win, and the Clippers would actually move up to number two, believe it or not. The Memphis Grizzlies at one point wore the number two seed. Um, it looked that way for a while, but uh, the Grizzlies have seen better days. They've lost six of their last ten games, going into the playoffs with not a lot of momentum, okay? And you never want to be without momentum, but especially right now, 
entering the latter part of April and the beginning of the playoffs. Memphis presently, if the season were to end now, would be at number six and would actually be going on the road for round number one against the number three seed. But Memphis could move up to number five if things play out their way, if they can beat Indiana and get some help elsewhere. And being number five right now would not be bad because they could get home court against Portland in the first round. But right now, the way it, the way it looks, Memphis is going to be at number six on the road. And Dallas, it looks like right now, in fact, it's definite that they will play at the number two seed, and if San Antonio can win, it will be against the Spurs. So it would be North Texas versus South Texas. Let's go ahead and move on to the Eastern Conference. And in the East, we already know that Atlanta and Cleveland are number one and number two, respectively. Chicago and Toronto are at three and four, and if you've looked in the standings in your paper, you're going to say, okay, well, it has Chicago basically a half game up, so if they went out, they get the tie break, right? Not necessarily. The reason is because Toronto has played one fewer game. Both have 32 losses in that column. So if Toronto, who has two games to go, and the Bulls, who have one game to go, if they win out, Toronto actually gets the number three seed because they went out on the tie break against the Bulls. So Toronto, even though they're a half game behind right now, control their own destiny. If Toronto should lose, however, one of the last two, and the Bulls can take care of business in their final regular season game, then the Bulls get number three. We know that number five is Washington. They cannot move up or down. Milwaukee at number six cannot move up or number down. If Boston, the Celtics, who clinched the playoff spot just recently, if they can win um, one of their um, final two games, they still have two games to go. If Boston can win one of their last two, then the Celtics will clinch the number seven spot and play Cleveland. And if I'm Boston, you know, put a true sermon to me, I'd rather play Atlanta in the first round than have to deal with LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and company. And again, Atlanta, they haven't played bad since the All-Star break, but not playing at the same place, at the same pace that they did prior to the All-Star break. That much is obvious. Cleveland would be a tougher matchup, in my opinion. So Boston's in, but could clinch number seven with the win in either tonight or tomorrow's matchups. Indiana has two games to go, just like Boston. Indiana is at the number eight seed, but has not clinched yet. The Pacers need to win out to assure themselves of a playoff spot. The reason is because they got Brooklyn breathing down their neck. Indiana has played one fewer game than Brooklyn. Brooklyn's at 37 and 44. Indiana is at 37 and 43. Pacers play at home tonight against Washington, who may not play their big dogs the whole game or at all. We'll have to wait and see because Washington is locked in at number five no matter what. But you can ensure that Indiana, when they play at Memphis to close out the regular season against the Grizzlies on Wednesday, you got to think Memphis is going to go all out, though. You got to think that. So, Indiana and Brooklyn. Indiana has a half game lead, but Brooklyn owns the tie break. So, if Indiana were to stumble, lose one of their last two, and Brooklyn wins, Brooklyn gets it. Even if Indiana were to um, win tonight and lose tomorrow, Brooklyn with the win, both would be at 38 and 44. Brooklyn again wins the tie break. So, very simply put, if you're the Brooklyn Nets, you need Indiana uh, to lose one of their next two games. And Brooklyn needs to win one of their next two to get in. If Indiana wins out, Brooklyn's eliminated. It's that simple. Miami needs all kinds of help. They're the other team in the East who presently is in 10th, top 8 go to the playoffs. If Miami can win at um, Philadelphia on Wednesday, and if Brooklyn loses to Orlando on Wednesday, and if Indiana loses out, means means loses to Washington and Memphis, three-way tie between Indiana, Brooklyn, and Miami for that final spot in the East. The eighth spot at 37 and 45 under that scenario, Miami holds tie breaks over both teams. Anything short of that, and the Heat, they're done. And remember, the Heat have won the Eastern Conference the last three years, but of course they had a little bit of help from that guy uh, who plays at Cleveland now. I think his name is LeBron James. So he kind of made a little bit of a difference, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, made a big difference. So there you have it right there. Indiana, they need to win out to wrap up the playoff spot. If they lose one of the last two, they leave the door open for Brooklyn. And if Indiana loses their last two and Brooklyn loses on Wednesday, then both leave the door open for Miami to steal that last spot, if you can believe that. So that's how things look if the season ended today. Here's how the playoffs would look. Atlanta would play um, Indiana. Cleveland would play Boston. And I'm going to say that Toronto would play Milwaukee. Okay, Toronto is a, game, is a half game behind Chicago. But remember, Toronto has one more game to play than Chicago. So if Toronto were to win out, Toronto would actually be at number three and would play Milwaukee. And Chicago at four, under that scenario I just described, would play the Washington Wizards. So there you have it. 
with, with the playoffs begin this upcoming weekend. Next time we come back will be probably on Thursday. Um, I'm going to try to get a special guest on that I've been talking to for a while that you know knows a lot about basketball. He's a little newer school than I am, or I'm a little more older school than he is. We'll try to get him on as a guest. So we'll talk later, everybody. Enjoy the NBA playoffs coming up. We'll be back Thursday to break down the upcoming NBA playoffs. Thanks, everybody. It's good to be back.